everyone, it's Jack and Ross from Cultaholic back again on this lovely Tuesday morning. Ross, how are you? Shaken to my very core, Jack the Jobber, because Avril Lavigne has taken to TikTok. Breaking news this morning, and her first TikTok is her miming over the old song Skater Boy, and you'll never guess who the skater boy she has in the video with her is. I'm going to guess... Is it Tony Hawk? It's only Tony no! Bloody Hawk. She's went and bloody done, hasn't she? Avril Levine pulling out the bag for the boys. That is top quality marketing for people of our age specifically. That's fantastic news. Yes. I've got some wrestling news as well, but nothing's going to be at the top of that, unfortunately. I'll get to the headlines anyway, and here they are. First of all, a SmackDown superstar is set to take a break from the ring. Next up, we have a reason behind last night's Hell in a Cell match on Monday Night Raw. And finally, a Raw star has revealed their brand new gimmick. More on that later on. So yes, first of all, Ross, a SmackDown star is taking a break as announced on their own personal Twitter. But who are we talking about today? That'll be Kevin Owens, who took to Twitter last night and said, I fought like hell at Hell in a Cell in that match against Sami Zayn, of course. Now, I need a little break. I'll be back soon. Thank you, guys. Why do you reckon he's taking a break, Jack? Let's speculate like knobheads. It could be a variety of reasons, couldn't it? It could be because he's feeling a bit banged up. He needs to recover from injuries. He maybe could be needing some kind of surgery that he needs to recover from. Or he could just be wanting to spend more time with his family. Of course, we know that Kevin Owens is uh, seemingly, from, from everything he posts on social media, like a very big family-orientated sort of guy as well. could be a variety of reasons, but it does make sense because in that Hell in a Cell match, he was fighting, he was fighting two different injuries in that match with Sami Zayn. His throat injury sustained from the Nigerian nail from Aziz on SmackDown the previous Friday. And also, didn't he injure his wrist in the match as well when he caught Sami Zayn off a dive? But I think it was seemed like a worked injury, but they were trying to make it seem like it was real sort of thing. And he was doing sentons off the apron to the floor, which kind of helped your body at all, yeah. really. So, yeah, all credit to Kevin Owens. He's, 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 he must have killed his body over the past 20 years doing what he does in the ring. So if he wants a break, fair play to him. All the best to him. Yeah, I agree as well. Um, it was, you know, what it was one of the it was one of the high points as well of that pay per view, I think, or that network special that that Owen Zane match. They always deliver when they're in together. Did you did you see some of the stiff shots they were exchanging as well? Yeah, I was saying like if there was one match on that card that should have been inside Hell in a Cell. I know like more recently on SmackDown, the sort of Intercontinental Title scene and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn's interactions maybe haven't been worthy of a Hell in a Cell, but the sheer history involved in that those two there, just get that in the cell. So shit, yeah. maybe one day. They'll still be fighting in 10 years' time, so we'll get it eventually. I would agree as well. But the next pay-per-view on the horizon is, of course, Money in the Bank 2021. And we already know the WWE title match for that event, as Bobby Lashley found a new challenger on last night's Raw. Uh, Ross, who is the new challenger? It's the only person it could have been based off yeah. the last <laughs> several months of Monday Night Raw. It's Kofi Kingston, everybody. I have not seen any of last night's Raw apart from one bit, which we'll oh. be speaking about a little bit later on, which I'm looking forward to already, Jack. So have you seen this bit with Kofi Kingston? How did you get there? I've read, but I've not yet watched up to that point, but I've read what happened with Kofi Kingston. So basically, uh, Kofi and Xavier Woods interrupted Lashley and MVP in the opening segment, which I did see. Lashley and MVP were partying with the the ladies that are part of their group now. I, I don't really understand. Uh, and basically, they got into an argument. The New Day, I believe, threw toast into the ring because MVP and Lashley wanted to do a toast with champagne. Yeah, it's, it's clever, good. that, it seems. Mm. Uh, and basically, it all led up to the main event, which was uh, Lashley facing Xavier Woods in the main event inside of a Hell in a Cell, which, you know, which is... <laughs> I had no idea. I woke up this morning. I, I made my way to work. I still had no idea. I flicked on my computer. I still had no idea. And then 10 minutes after flicking on my computer, that's when I learned there was a Hell in a Cell match on last night's Raw. What a way to do things, eh? Not Because I can obviously see why USA Network or NBC, whoever, whoever owns that station, would be a bit miffed by the fact that Fox got themselves a Hell in a Cell match on last week's SmackDown. So I can fully see why they did it, but, you know... Try well, and get the word out there a bit before doing it, you know? Maybe do maybe it next a week. Little, Maybe a little bit. PW Insider do have the reason for last night's Hell in a Cell match, saying the prime reason we've seen Hell in a Cell bouts on broadcast slash cable TV was to give WWE's TV partners something extra, as well as to try and grab fans' attention as the company builds towards the return of live audiences next month. But it does dilute it further, doesn't it? The Hell in a Cell stipulation. Grab fans' attention? I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. That's the thing. Grab fans' attention. It's already happened. It's not going to happen next week. 
Mm, I well, can't grab the that. attention, but it's it's, it's gone. Oh. Anyway, uh, the match did happen. It was a part. I've not watched it yet, but apparently it was pretty good. Obviously, Lashley got the win over Xavier Woods, uh, and that kicked off this feud between him and Kingston properly. Because after the match, MVP locked himself inside the cell uh, and basically helped Lashley beat down Woods. And Lashley choked out Woods with Kofi trapped outside the cell, unable to help his tag team partner. So that's all gonna lead to the Money in the Bank title match down the line. Uh, but there's more things added as well to the Money in the Bank card. I'll rattle through them uh, because there were some qualifier matches as well on last night's Raw for Money in the Bank. And I quite enjoy that they're doing qualifying matches. I know that can be a bit inconsistent, yeah. but yeah, it makes it feel earned. Uh, so in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match so far, we've got Ricochet, who beat AJ Styles with the help of the Viking Raiders, I believe. John Morrison, who beat Randy Orton... And Riddle, who beat Drew no, McIntyre. he didn't. He did, and Riddle, who beat Drew McIntyre. I know. I, I know. Speechless. <laughs> well done to those lads, though, earning their ways into that right. matchup in the, in the hardest way possible. I think I think from what I could tell, uh, Riddle... I mean, Orton, sorry, is kind of jealous of Riddle because he managed to get in, and Riddle and Randy Orton didn't and it's all going to lead to shenanigans down the line uh, in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match we've got Asuka Naomi Alexa Bliss and Nikki, Qua- uh, Nikki Cross excuse me they've qualified so far I'm worried that the women's Money in the Bank ladder match is going to be overly spooky now because Alexa's involved I don't know yeah maybe maybe uh, we've also but now, got but, but, but oh, go there is a perfect remedy in that matchup now Jack in the form of a superhero so maybe the spookiness will be nullified We'll get onto that in just a moment's time. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rhea Ripley will defend her Raw Women's title against Charlotte Flair. That's not really a surprise because it, there was an inconclusive finish at Hell in a Cell. And of course, as we've already mentioned, Bobby Lashley will defend his title against Kofi Kingston. But two matches have been announced for next week's Raw, and they've both got classic uh, gimmick stip. Well, it says here that they've got classic gimmick stipulations, but I think only the first one has. I don't want to. I don't want to disparage whoever provided the notes for us here, but. Uh, we'll go through it. The first one's a strap match between Jackson Riker and Elias. That's definitely a classic gimmick. That is uh, the least appealing match <laughs> I've ever seen advertised on a wrestling show ever because I, I'm i just personally not a fan of strap matches. I think back to Daniel Bryan and The Fiend and other big ones that have happened in WWE recently. And they're just not fun, are they? They're just very hampered, very hamstrung. Mm, yeah, I think so as well. I think so as well. But wait until the second classic gimmick that we've got. It's a triple threat uh, Money in the Bank qualifier. That classic, <laughs> what's going on Remember here? Remember those at WrestleMania, that WrestleMania, <laughs> Money in the Bank qualifying main event. Oh. Oh. Um, so it's going to be a triple threat match with the three losers of the men's qualifiers from last night's show. Randy Orton, AJ Styles and Drew McIntyre battling it out after all three of them lost their first chance on last night's show. That, that should be a good match. Orton, yeah. AJ and Drew. Yeah. Who do you think will win? Oh, who do I think will win? AJ Styles. Mm, yeah. Maybe. Or maybe because I was thinking maybe you know Drew how Drew's lost this tip, uh, the, the the chance to challenge for Bobby's title at Hell in a Cell. What oh. if Drew wins the Money in the Bank? Oh, it's going to be Drew. It's going to be Drew. I think yeah. AJ as well. It looks like him and Omos might be going into a feud with the Viking Raiders. So oh, yeah, no. maybe. Mm. Uh, and finally, as you alluded to a bit earlier, Raw has revealed a new superhero. Ross, who is that? <laughs> Nikki Cross is yes. Mighty Molly. It's um, Yes, she has a new attire, um, which is from a Disney Pixar film that I've completely forgotten. I saw this on Twitter saying they've made her one of the bunnies of a film that I've forgotten. I do okay. apologise here this morning. Mm. But yeah, she's now a superhero because she wants to channel a spark inside and it's brought out the superhero in her. Yeah, I was really... At first, I felt really, really bad for her. Um, but then two things made me feel less bad for her. One, she it worked. She won the match with the superhero thing. It was a tag team match with Alexa Bliss. They both qualified for the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match, beating Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, unfortunately for Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Um, and also, secondly, Big Demo, who, of course, is in a real-life relationship with Nikki Cross. Are they married now? They weren't married, even. Married, yeah, married. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, he tweeted, seeming to imply that it was actually... Or Killian Dane, I should say, sorry. He tweeted implying that it was Nikki Cross's own idea, saying something along the lines of, well, I'm really pleased for you. You thought of this idea, you've seen it through, and it's helped you win. So there we go. I mean, maybe she wants to do this superhero thing, because at first, obviously, 
especially with the way the booking of the women's division has been going recently. I feared the worst. I was like, oh no, it looks really, it looks really silly. But Nikki, if anyone can play off silly well, it's Nikki Cross. So that was the thing because my initial reaction was simply based off a screenshot on Twitter I saw this morning, and you see the attire, and it's not the most like inspirational attire. But I think that might be the point: is that it looks a bit naff, but she's very inspirational and she can do the gimmick very well. And which, of course, Nikki Cross will do, as you say, because she does that stuff very well indeed. Yeah. But I think it's actually quite smart because you listen to Brucey P on his podcasts and he says for a long time Vince McMahon has been a massive admirer of the Mighty Mouse character oh. and he's been looking for his own Mighty Mouse famously for many years we've seen Neville when he had the cape when he arrived yes. on the main roster that was meant to be a Mighty Mouse so maybe Nikki Cross has seen this sort of this gaping penchant for a Mighty Mouse and she's gone hey I'll have a bit of that yeah maybe maybe she has and good luck to her Whatever the reason for this was, because I mean, it's got her in the money. But it's got her in the money in the bank uh, ladder match. So, and I think there's a moral to be to be taken from this, Jack. And it's never to judge a book by its cover, because that's what I did this morning. And I've been proven slightly wrong by watching what actually happened on the show, and not just looking at a screenshot on Twitter. So Fair there play. you go, kids. Uh, <laughs> and best of luck as well to do drop her fellow Scott uh, on the raw roster there. Hey, that doesn't sound as bad as it sounds either because it looks like she's going to turn on Eva Marie. She's getting sick of Eva Marie being a bit of a judgmental cow. Mm, already, <laughs> two weeks in. <laughs> yeah. Good. We'll look forward to that. Good. Yeah. Get, her, get her off Eva Marie and just have her be a big bloody powerhouse in the women's division yeah. just ripping folks' heads off called Piper Niven. Absolutely. That's her name. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Ross. I believe there is enough news for a second video as well, so everybody stay tuned for that and leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you later on.